G'day. Today's video is a bit of a weird one. I'm not uh, sure whether it's a, you know, a highly successful or whether it's one of those dead ends that you run into occasionally. However, this week I made one of these things. And if you don't recognise it, that's because it's something that I don't think has ever been made before. For want of a better term, I'm calling it a knife edge clamp. What it is, is the blade out of a Stanley knife uh, with a, just an arch and a, a screw uh, to, to clamp onto something. I was trying to work out how to make these with, with reasonable accuracy. And what I decided was that if I scribed a line in there, uh, did a bit of layout work using geometric uh, con constructs, which I'll show later, um, I could then come along and clamp that onto the scribe line and use that to level in the vise on the mill. And it seems to work. However, it didn't give me the result I want. Uh, for both of these, I had to do a little bit of trimming. I was around about half a degree out uh, on one or two of the, 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 the sides. And that was, I think, due to the layout. So the tool is a success. The method that I was going to use to use the tool isn't. So I'm not quite sure what that le where that leaves the tool. I've cut out the three bits I'm going to weld together. Um, so this is the, the block that the blade sits in. There's the blade. Now, one of the things I need to do is put a slit in there that I can mount that blade in just to hold it firmly. And so I've got a, um, a cutter, which is just a little bit bigger. And so that's fine. Now this is a 32 thou, I think. Um, and I'm going to put a slot in. Now, before I made this vise up, I'd have trouble with this because I'd have to try and work out how to hold this thing uh, to, to put the cut in. But what I can do with this, and this is why this is a, such a nice little uh, project, is that even if you make it when, you, when you're just starting out, uh, it's worth hanging on to because it'll do things like this for you. So I've got one of my angle blocks. I've clamped the, uh, well, clamped the material in the vise, so I set that up on the, on the flat, but then I've gone and clamped it onto the angle block. And so I can run along with this cutter and put a slot in there without any dramas. Okay, so um, yeah, worthwhile thing to make up if, if you um, run into this problem. Uh, the other thing I could have done, I guess, was put a block down, clamped the, this to the top of the block and then run along. But uh, because I had this, I thought I'll use it and um, you know, see how we go. The material I'm using here is a bit of stainless. It's out of the scrap bin. Uh, and so I need to make that slot nine millimeters deep. So I, th I think I'll start with, with just sort of a four and go along quite slowly, just see how I go, uh, and then come back for another pass. And that's just because it's stainless, uh, although it's a sharp cutter, it's a thin cutter. Don't want it breaking on me if I can help it. So we'll just take it easy with it. I've got my slot in the in the block here. Um, yeah, went went reasonably well. I had a spot in the middle there somewhere for some reason the cutter caught, uh, but it didn't break, which was really nice. Uh, and so I was able to uh, to continue the cut um, after after clearing it out. I think I think the problem was that it's a narrow cut and the chips built up in there and it, it was just jamming. But got it done. This one I've trenched out this part. Uh, and that piece there will weld onto there. This one I've got to kick up at uh, eight and a half degrees because the bevel on the blade is 17. So half of that is, is eight and a half. So I want that to sit flat. Now you could have that so it's sitting, the blade is sitting flat rather than the bevel. Uh, and if you were just using a normal scriber, that'd be fine, but occasionally I use a height gauge and a height gauge uh, scribe is got, has got a flat bottom and an, uh, an angled top. So what I'm going to have to do is come in like that, hence the, the eight and a half degrees. Okay. Now this is uh, eighth material thick. The, the parallel that I used here, the smallest parallel is, is eighth. And so to hold that in the vise, I got a bit of round bar and, and uh, held it like that. So just if, you, if you're ever stuck with that sort of thing, um, 
that that might get you out of that one. What I'll do is is put that in the vise using the uh, protractor, and then I can come in and just sort of trim that off, trim that off, flatten that off, and uh, everything, all fingers crossed, be be rosy. There's my little jigger uh, after a trip to the welder. So I've welded on the, the slotted piece and welded on the, the round bush. I, I usually make these things a little bit longer and then machine them back as a final operation just in case there's any daggy bits of weld that need to be cleaned up on the end. So that's what I've done here. What I now need to do um, is re-drill that um, because I don't think it's quite the right size on this end. Uh, but then tap that M6 and in here drill a couple of holes and unfortunately they're going to have to go right through uh, so that I can put a couple of M3 grub screws in there and they're just to hold the blade uh, you know lock the blade in place so it's not flopping all over the place so uh, no big deal there um, but I'll, I'll do that I then need to make the screw up for the end here uh, and put a little brass tip on the end of that I've now drilled and hat and tapped uh, some M3 grub screws here. I've had to go right the way through because that material is just too thin to, to stop halfway through. So I've gone all the way through. If you wanted to, you could drill those out to a, an M3 or three and a half or something like that just to uh, neaten up a little bit. But what I now want to do is the, the screw that goes in there for clamping. Now, these threads are rolled and so you can probably just make out there's a little bit of a raised rim there and if I put that on a material it's going to scuff it up. So what I'm going to do is put a, a, a small hole in there, probably a three, three and a half, and then make a little brass pin to go in there to act as a bearing surface on here. So I'll do that in a moment. A um, couple of things too, I've once I've finished this I'm going to take those corners off because they are you know quite dangerous. Here's the finished item. I've got my blade in place, it's held in place with a couple of grub screws, and I've got my brass tipped screw to act as a, as a, as a clamp. Uh, I've taken the corners off as I suggested I would. One of the reasons too that this is, is, as long as it is, is that you can put this in backwards so that you don't have a, a blade and have it sitting in the bottom of a drawer and, and, and gash your hand on it, which is a, a which is a, a nice idea. So how does this all work? Well, the way it's designed is I've got a piece of aluminium here. I've got a, I've, I've scribed a line in there, okay, uh, and that blade will locate in the line, and as you can see, right, I've now got that lined up in the in the scribe line and that will then let me do something like this if, if you imagine that that's um, that's the edge of the vise right I can rest that on there like that clamp up the work in the vise then remove this slot and that scribe mark will be parallel to the vise jaw now of course you need to train your vise jaw up but what that means is that you can mark something out on a piece of, of plate and set it up like this, machine down to that line, and away you go. What good's that, you ask? Well, I'll show you. Those of you who have, have watched a number of my uh, videos probably have seen these being used before. Uh, so this is a, a, it's just a solid square, a uh, quarter inch thick, uh, 45, 45, 90 degrees. Uh, and one of the things I've been trying to think of is, okay, how would you make one of these yourself? Now, it gets a little bit tricky, but with this thing, it, it becomes a lot easier. So if you wanted to, to I mean, I, I bought these off for eBay. If you wanted to make some yourself, though, this is how you do it. If you can imagine this is a piece of, of plate, we'll start off with... A straight line okay what I'll then do get a compass oh, probably about there somewhere right 
I've now got two points equal distance from that one. Doesn't really matter too much. Whoop, I need to make that a little bit bigger. Okay, I've now got that. I've got that. So this, these two points here, a line joining those two is going to intersect that at, at 90 degrees. I can then put that there and that there. Join those two up. That line's now at 90 degrees. Okay. If I come back to my original line, uh, in fact we might make that a bit bigger just to, to, to emphasise. Got that one. And I've got that one. I didn't make that quite long enough. Okay. Now that line, that point, and that point. If I join those up, I've got 45, 45, and 90. And so what I've got is basically I've marked out one of those okay so if you did that on a bit of steel uh, and trimmed that back to you know within two or three millimeters uh, put your scribe mark on and then using that you could mill that out okay now if this if the steel you're marking out is, is a little bit thicker you know quarter inch whatever you might want to have a bit of plywood sitting next to it so you can you know just have a piece of steel like so have some plywood next to it so you've got a spot to put a mark and 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 uh, some intersection points and away you go The other one of the ones I've got is 30 degrees and 60 degrees and 90 degrees. All right, this one's even easier. Once again, I'll start with a straight line. All right. So these three are, are 60 degrees. And then if you wanted to get a 30 degree one out of those, Two arcs to bisect that that line. And then you have it. 90 degrees, 60 degrees, 30 degrees.
Armed with a set of dividers, you can uh, make up your own squares. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you for the next one.